In today's video, I set myself a challenge. Could I make a million dollars in a week on Sims 4? I almost forgot to mention too, I only be starting with zero dollars. If this ain't rags to riches, I don't know what is. Going through each day of this challenge, you'll see me gain wealth through a number of methods. From begging, to borrowing, to borrowing 2.0, to even selling sugar to my friends, yeah. Best believe this journey is gonna be a struggle all the way down to the wire with an incredible Let's twist go. at the end. No further ado, Let's get this money. Day one starts off on a beautiful Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on the dot. Our hero of this story, Deshaun Grays, which is the blackest name you could give a white man. I'll take all responsibility for that. Anyway, Deshaun stands there ready to take on the world with nothing but his shysty and black Air Force Ones to his name. And his house in front of him, if you could call it that, but yeah with not a dime in deshaun's name i decided to beg for money which was a l feeling offended i thought to myself why not just steal the money sadly that got us punched in our face getting check had deshaun doing a little dance so out of fear of embarrassment i ran away i tried begging again which actually went pretty well but the amount of money we got from it was a real eye opener if we was gonna make the money we was trying to make in time we was gonna have to switch up what we was doing so i stole money from a guy that was fishing but i had to hurry up and run away before unk snitched on us funny enough i returned to the area of the crime to bed, making the decision to rob Unk for almost blowing our cover. Feeling like an expert pickpocketer, I decided to try to steal from Mr. Tiki shirt again. Oh boy. Ow. Dang! I ain't gonna lie, I really thought about lighting Mr. Tiki shirt up like a Christmas tree, but it was way too early to be getting that type of attention. So I just went back to begging. Also getting another steal in. At this point, I was making pretty good money, but I was ready to make great money. So I made the decision to go rob my neighbors. But I quickly realized my burglary rank was way too low. So I decided to max out my burglary rank and my beggar rank while I was at it. And listen, the reason I quote unquote cheated was the fact that getting your rank up legitimately would pretty much make this challenge damn near impossible. With our newfound abilities, we break in no problem. Realizing no one was home, I wasted no time taking anything of value. Returning home, I sold all our stolen goods, making pretty good money. After making these sales, I noticed a sim walking, but not any sim, Lily Fing. Fang. Fing, I don't know. But the moral of the story is she got dope. So I took some time to have a conversation with her, knowing she'll come into play later. Getting done talking to Lily had rewarded us with two new traits, charisma and comedy, which I wasted no time maxing out, knowing they gonna come into play later again. For some reason, I thought I didn't talk to Lily enough, so I had went back to talk to her to lock in our relationship. I did not want to waste her potential. I tried stealing money, going from confident to embarrassed. Trying to redeem myself, I go to the museum to borrow, to borrow, some items before I start the heist I mean borrowing spree I talked to a random Sam to try to get rid of the shine's embarrassment but that was boring so I just ended up going into the museum wasting no time taking all we can But that boy Deshaun almost got caught, so I just left immediately. As Soon as I got back home, I sold all our borrowed items, gained us some good dinero. And yes, even though we sold the items, even though they're borrowed, don't worry, I'm gonna give them back later. Don't I look like a trustworthy guy? Yeah, I know your answer is yes. Noticing night was approaching and that boy Deshaun was finna piss his pants, I decided to put our profits to the use and cop the essentials. Deshaun played no games, putting that toilet to use soon as it touched damn. And let's not mention how bro's a whole iPad kid. I don't even know where the tablet even came from. Feeling refreshed, I made our way back to the museum to finish what we started. Everything was going as smooth as a baby's bottom, no ditty, until we made our way upstairs. Oh, why Shorty's not paying attention? Quickly. Yoink. Woo! She definitely seen that. Yo, 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 yo. Chill, 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 chill. Dang, she trying to fight me, yo. Bro. After Shorty blew up at the spot, I ain't even try to steal nothing else. I just got up out of Dodge. Returning home, I saw what we did scavenge from the museum. Realizing our pockets was on slow, I made the choice to visit an old friend of ours, Bob Pancakes. Pulling up to Bob's crib, I wasted no time running my mouth. After a few minutes of talking, it felt like me and Bob had stayed in touch after all this time. Basically, I just maxed out Bob's friendship status because it was dragging way too long talking to him normally. Anywho, with me and Bob being back on great terms, I finally had got the ability to buy sugar. And I repeat, sugar. Sugar 
still costing damn near all our money. Buying that sugar didn't only put a hole in Deshaun's pocket but his stomach. Bro had sprinted downstairs and had got a bowl of cereal. Smacking on that joint without even moving an inch of the ski mask. Funny enough, bro was still hungry so he helped himself to a sandwich too. After a long day, Deshaun finally returns home, revealing the do-rag and his ability to go sleep with glasses on. Day two begins and Deshaun hits his morning routine, staying true to his iPad kid behaviors. I pull up to Bob's house to have breakfast. I'm definitely not gonna exploit the fact I could do this throughout this video. After breakfast, I had met up with Lily trying to sell her some sugar, which for some reason she wasn't trying to buy. So, you know, I take that time to try to read or something. Sadly, that ended with her walking away. Yes, I know, that, that was a big boy L. After taking two L's back to back, I realized I never had asked Bob about selling drugs, which would make it impossible for Sims to buy off of us. And and yes, I finally admit, our sugar ain't sugar, but cocaine. Sue me. After getting our new illegal trace added, I made sure I maxed out each and every one of them. We're getting our money. Putting our new skills to use, I chose to go to Chestnut Ridge where wealthy ranch owners live, picking Sienna as our first victim. Trying to kill two birds with one stone, I brought Lily with. While talking to Lily for the hundredth time, I still didn't realize she wasn't buying the Coke because it was in brick form, making it much more expensive than selling it as Ziplocs. With this newfound info, you think I break the brick down into Ziplocs? Nah, I just went to Sienna and tried to see if she was buying bricks. Only thing good that came from that interaction that Sienna was feeling the kid, and I finally came to my senses. What we're gonna have to do, sadly, is break one of these mugs down. I went back home, broke the brick down, making 30 Ziplocs. Now with our more consumable product, I had pulled back up on Lily having her cop two Ziplocs. And you know I had a devilly. Cringy. All right, let me chill. Selling two Ziplocs to Sienna. Now with Moolah coming in, I wanted to start preparing for my next steps. Good little sales right there. We still got 26 more. We sell all this, we can walk away with like 60 grand. Now with that money, I have another plan for what we could do with it. So I felt it was only right to get fly. Fly, fly. And for the ones thinking, what he getting dressed for? You wasting time. Nah, you gotta look presentable with. We need to go to a nightclub. The reason being, no, not to party, is to network. We can start getting a lot of customers and start getting rid of some of this coke. That's exactly what I did. Pulled up to a club, talked to a sim, instantly selling two Ziplocs. Next, I noticed a paparazzi putting a grin on my face, knowing a possible celebrity you could pull up, equating to big bucks. But she, I most definitely still try to sell his coke to the paparazzi, but she got pissed and then whooped on us. I finally went in the club, introducing myself to as many sims as possible. But I guess one of the sims has said something crazy to Deshaun, cause bro had just got heated. So making sure that Deshaun wouldn't die from anger, I most definitely done deleted that effect. Introducing myself to multiple sims most definitely paid off, allowing me to sell two Ziplocs to Baco. Hi, how are you? Next, I had the honor to sell two Ziplocs to Ellen. Shout out, Ellen. I remember your show when I was younger. Yep, yep. Staying focused, I had started to build a relationship with Clara. Of course, to sell her coat, which was a waste of time because Shorty had no bread. But as one door closes, another opens. I had seen an interestingly dressed sim on the dance floor that goes by the name of Izzy. Fabulous. So I spent damn near an hour in game talking to Izzy Fabulous, hoping he was the high end customer we've been looking for. And let's say he was exactly that. Big money move right there. Our night wind down with me trying to make last minute sales with not one of them going through, sadly. So feeling very accomplished with the day, our hero went back home to hit the hay, starting. Day three starts with Deshaun freshening up and enjoying a subscribe PNG. I wonder who put that there. Similar to day two, I pull up to Bob's house to enjoy a ham and cheese sandwich, a constant in Deshaun's life if there's any. Putting our profits to use from yesterday, I spent a good portion of our money on two bricks of coke. Knowing I couldn't sell the bricks to our current broke customer, I decided to do some scouting for some new faces in Del So Valley, Sims 4 equivalent to Hollywood. I chose to visit the Bailey Moon Manor, thinking I'd see a member of the Moon family. But instead, I see a pruny old woman, but not any pruny old woman, Judith Ward, a global superstar. After seeing her, I didn't blink before saving the game, knowing she was gonna be a big buyer. After a couple minutes of just going back and forth with Judith Ward, we finally got her to buy a brick. I couldn't be no happier. But being in such a wealthy neighborhood, it thoughts flooded and I decided, you know what? Let's do a home invasion. So pulling up to Chattoo Peak, I took everything that had value quicker than Sonic.
Like any other time, I went home and I sold all the goods. Also, I called Izzy over to see if I could make a quick sale, but it was too soon since the last time I had sold them coke. A cola. <laughs> Still trying to get rid of these Ziplocs. I had pulled up to a family's home in the neighborhood. And I already know how crazy that sound. We gotta put our heart on ice, cause the quota gotta get made. I knock on the door and they let me right in like I'm not a stranger with a shiesty on. Soon as I stepped a foot up in their house, I had ran to this sweet old lady to sell her two Ziplocs of coke. Mama was next, sold her two Zips too. At this point, Deshaun was too gleeful, took it upon himself to go outside and play in the mud like fucking Peppa the Pig. After destroying this happy family with drug addiction, I decided to pull up to a rooftop party. Seeing Baco swimming in the pool, I had went to go sell him two Zips. Mr. Gold Tux had caught my attention, so I had went over to go talk to him, as y'all would know, to sell him coke. But while talking to him, I start hearing the sound. It's, that's not Peppa. Uh, now nah, that's that. Hold on, I'm smelling. I'm hearing. Is that a pig? 12 had pulled up and took us away talking about, we don't want your drug peddling kind around. Man, if you don't shut your goofy ass up. As we sit in the cell, time doesn't stop and day four comes upon us. This some bullshit. Day four starts with Deshaun getting released from jail. Feeling like getting arrested was a setback. I decided to accelerate my progress and we're starting the game. Knowing running the game would have its cost, I had went to my inventory to check our supply to see that, ah, oh, they removed all my coke. Now I'm feeling like we had hit a wall. I had went home to get some sleep. Psych, I did the exact opposite. I stayed awake resurrecting all our failed run sims, planning on using them for our game. But come to find out, you can't even hire household sims to be a part of your game. So now we just got a whole bunch of niggas chilling at our crib. You live and you learn. But if you haven't learned already, Deshaun doesn't let L stop nothing. So knowing what I know now, I recruit basic gang members, a right-hand man, bodyguards, and enforcers. And... I found a spot in Tom Rag to place our gang's HQ. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's all we need. After making these advancements, I had a fear I'd get caught up like I did last time. So I made sure I bribed the police with 10K so they would stay away for a while. Funny enough, you think me doing all this stuff will allow me to make crazy money. Nope. My game was glitched. Why ain't nobody showing up as they up in my gang? That's kind of weird. After a while, the problem ended up fixing itself. But even with the gang members icon showing up now, I still couldn't send them on no missions, which is completely dookie because that was one of the ways I was going to use to fill my pockets. But not all is bad, though. I had went to my right hand man to see what money there was to be made, and he sent me up to meet some rapper named Tuba, which is an ass name, but I digress. Tuba pulls up pretty much instantly. I'm thinking he was finna buy some drugs, try to hire me as a hitman. Bro just wanted to talk and be friends with a gang. If this ain't corny, I don't know what is. I ain't going to talk too crazy. Though. Corniness pays. Tuba gave me 35k just for our time, putting me at 75,000. Way up, I feel blessed. Way up, I feel blessed. After this beautiful moment, I couldn't ignore the inevitable no more. Deshaun had to go to bed. Waking up, Deshaun took a quick bath. Then set a big move into play, overseeing a huge shipment, AKA going outside the country to buy some big drugs. So I chose two members to come with me and we headed to Salvador. Best believe I paid for the cheapest Airbnb money could buy. After touching down to our BNB, it didn't take long before we get a call from our right hand man that the dealer was finally ready to meet. Pulling up to the dealer's house, I ain't gonna lie, I was slight nervous thinking about how the transaction Action would go but it was straightforward no bs bro didn't even charge me so g looks for that when i tell you i checked my inventory and i couldn't help but to smile i see crates filled with coke and two high quality bricks nigga i feel like tony montana but i get snapped back to reality with all right what bro say mo octan has Asked me out on a day shot. Man, bro, we getting money. You asked me some dumb junk like this. After getting the goods, I didn't know how to leave Salvador. To, so I just sat at the dealer's place, wasting time. Finally going back to the B&B to get some sleep, thinking that would send us home. Day five begins with Deshaun waking up at 12.54, finna piss himself. So after opening the fire hydrant, I go downstairs to have breakfast. Which, guess what it was? The ham and cheese sandwich. Deshaun's only source of nutrition. Still being Salvador, I decided to visit the museum having izzy meet us there to sell to him but i figured out Deshaun is awaiting trial but keep a low profile dang i didn't even know it was that severe so until Deshaun goes through trial i'll be unable to sell coke which is terrible news because we're only two days away from being at day seven but if there's a will 
there's a way. I get back to business and rob the museum until I get interrupted with a phone call from my right hand saying the dealer wants to meet again. I'd be a fool to say no. So I beeline to the dealer's house, talking to the dealer for a good amount of time until I realized the dealer didn't want to do business again. The game had just glitched. After being humped like a camp, I took the time to learn how to leave Salvador to and hit it back to HQ. Before I could even collect my thoughts, I received a message that kid August wants to meet with you at a bar nearby. Apparently, he needs three high quality bricks of cocaine as Sailor, Sailor. Happy about this opportunity, I still had to get some things sorted. I put down our credit coat. I took the time to choose Deshaun's law firm for his up and coming trial, costing a pretty penny. Knowing I still needed another brick for our mystery buyer, I called up a big shot drug dealer. Time flew by and the dealer finally arrived, having exactly what we needed for a pretty good price. Still spending damn near all our moolah. I put the credit coat down, cracked it open, and grabbed all the high quality bricks from inside, giving us more than enough coke to do business with the mystery buyer. Finally going to meet with the mystery buyer, AKA the kid. He wasted no time pulling up. As always, we glide through the conversation leading the kid to shoot us over 59,000 for yes, three sir. bricks, which is a great deal since the crate that they came from only costs 45,000 and has six bricks in it. And I know some of y'all thinking, how you selling coke in your trial still hasn't came? Great question. I figured out, yes, I can't sell coke to any base level Sim, but Sims that are part of Quest like the kid, we can still do business with, which is definitely a blessing. I make it back to the HQ and I find a feature that allows me to turn two Sims into high-end clients, allowing them to buy bricks. The Despite the rant I literally just went on, I met up with Sienna being one of our new high-end clients at my house, having this to say. Sean is still waiting. Bro, come on, man. Just effing up business. I really honestly can't even get mad, especially with my right-hand man calling me not even a second later with news. I just stumbled upon an opportunity to set up a deal with some Salvadorian business partner. Should I arrange? Hey, yes. Go. Our right hand man be cooking, I'm not gonna lie. Returning back to the HQ, the buyer pulls up quick as light, which funny enough was the kid again. Talking as we always do, blah, 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 blah. Then, tell us to bro. 200K! Oh yeah, big boy money we're playing with now. Now sitting on $287,811. Usually I don't say anything after the comma, but it's a big day. Holding on to this much bread reminded me of our past days, so I decided to hide our breaks in plain sight. Don't even ask me what I was thinking in the middle of playing this, because I couldn't even give you no answer. Good news, though, I was finally able to put a member on a mission, which is a little too late, but hey. Next, I decided to go to Bob's house to use their laptop to launder my money. And yes, I'm still freeloading with a quarter of a million dollars in my pockets. I'm that guy. Before we could even attempt to launder our money, we got a call. Deshaun's trial was finally here. Damn. Rushing home, I sat around waiting for the trial to start, and it did. Deshaun pretty much walked off in the distance, disappearing, leaving us to watch the trial Ga gobble, gabble, I gabble, I think it's called, tick down. With the trial ended, everything said and done, we had lost the trial and paid fucking $43,000 out of our pocket, leaving real-time Eli with these thoughts. If it wasn't for the fact that we were rich right now, I would be entirely super pissed i'm still kind of pissed i'm not gonna lie but like i said this frees us up to do whatever the f we want i went back to bob's house wanting to talk to him about the status of coke in the sims world where does it sell high where can you buy low but i arrived to nothing but bob's girl which we have no business with but while sitting there we get a call from judith she was down to buy some coke so i was down to sell to her first i meet up with lily to make a sale then sienna and finally meeting judith who didn't even buy no coke when i tell you i could have pimp smacker right there bro but i keep my composure now i'm feeling lost again on what to do i took some time to collect my thoughts that's when i decided to meet with Bako, who unfortunately couldn't afford any coat at this point i was like getting mad auntie really just pissed me off though because it's like you just called me over your house to buy some cocaine and now you're not trying to buy it like what is you talking about but getting mad wasn't going to bring us that million so i put our sights back on the target and decided to pull up to the club something that worked earlier for us in the challenge but not any club the hottest club in town Trying to sell all we can, I met up with the kid at the club, but he didn't even have the option to sell him anything. Which is fair enough, I made plenty of money off of him as is. So now I'm scouting for new faces, spotting a celebrity that goes by the name of Thorn Bailey, living it up inside the club. I knew I wasn't gonna have no luck going inside, so I tried my luck calling him outside. Dang, they actually work, hold on, he, he coming out. With Thorn now face to face with me, I spent the night talking to him, taking us into... Day six starts with us finally selling coke to Thorn, getting us to $307,000. Then like it could still be more celebs hanging around the club, I went looking. And I was right. By Tiny Child became our next victim. Trying a different approach, I attempted to enter the club, and it wasn't happening. <laughs> Luckily, by Tiny decided to come outside, giving us the opportunity to talk to her, leading us to the cell. Going home, I invited Izzy to sell him coke, but he still wasn't budging. 
Still too soon. So Deshaun goes to use the bathroom. But these niggas were washing it. After a while, the coast became clear and that boy handled business. Feeling a little famished, we pull up to Bob's to get our feel. Still acting broke to stay rich. That's a major key right there. After enjoying our sandwich, I really had appreciated the pancakes hospitality throughout this entire journey. It was time to repay them. The pancakes have been great people to me, but we, we have a job to do. Everything that can get swiped, it has to get swiped. I decided to go back downstairs to ask Bob to borrow two bricks. With the flat screen TV being untouched, the pancakes being present, and my thirst to complete this challenge, I attempted to shoot Miss Pancakes down with a chopper. And not a gun, but an actual helicopter. When she shot down, damn, they're giving me a heart attack. <laughs> Thinking my Sam had died. But bro, is Jason Voorhees with a ski mask. So out of anger, I did the unthinkable and shot Bob Pancakes and sprayed Miss Pancakes up in no time. All this for a flash screen. I go back upstairs and change my outfit. Seeing my energy is getting low, I go to sleep in Bob's bed. Phone blowing up the entire time. Getting calls about dating advice. Can we launder money? And a member asking, can they see me after making this week's rounds, which I definitely say yes to. Waking up to see our member looking like the star of Kill Bill. I talked to her to figure out she has nothing for us. The audacity for her to even come back empty handed. Lucky she didn't end up like the pancakes. With the challenge coming to a close and time becoming more of a luxury by the second, I came up with anything I can get robbed gotta get robbed right now first location I went to was a bar which was stupid for two reasons reason one it's a very public area giving us very little room for error reason two it's a bar it's really nothing up in there worth no money besides the drinks that we can't steal so I ended up leaving with nothing next location the golf's house I had an inkling that they have a lot of art laying around and I was most definitely right taking as many sculptures as I could until I got caught I took a break from robbing to sell some of our spoils, getting us some pretty decent cash. Onto our next location, Judith Ward's house. Like any other robbery, taking anything that was of value. After making her house a ghost town, I attempted to sell her coat, which she had declined. whoop de doo ain't nothing new with Judith. Next house, the Bailey Moon Manor. I do my thing taking what I please until I get a call mid robbery from Judith Ward. She said she was down to buy some coat. So I pulled back up to her house, hoping to make a quick buck, getting straight to business when, look at this, that's why I'm wasting my, <laughs> All I gotta say, she shouldn't have laughed. <laughs> oh. Fish. Uh. Rongo. Playing with me, bro. Oh. 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 Goofy out of here. Oh. 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 Then she won't talk crazy like she ain't been putting a nigga on a wild goose chase. Oh, nah. <laughs> After whooping that ass, I took one last statue and dipped. Going back to the moon's crypt to finish the job until we get interrupted again. But this time by our hunger. So you know I grabbed our specialty, sat down with the family, enjoyed our sandwich, got up, stole the flat screen, and dipped. Only in Sims 4. At this point, I decided to burglarize another town, choosing Windenburg. First house getting robbed, the lighthouse, interesting name. Robbing this house took some time with everybody being present, leading us into... Day seven begins with us back home selling our booty from the robberies and selling the rest of our coke to the black hole that we call the Sims for inventory. And don't ask me why Judith War is here, cause I wouldn't know. Umbrag Manor was our next target. Robbing that place was beyond easy since nobody was present. Up next, we pull up to a high rise apartment, assuming that it has good potential. But that potential was never reached because I got impatient. Okay, halfway mark and it's still not letting us open. We just gotta go home. As usual, we sell the goods from our robberies, putting us at $451,000. I'm balling like Kobe. RIP Kobe, of course. With this being the final day and me not knowing who told the game to change my fit back to the shiesty and the black forces, we say goodbye to this fit for the last time and get cleaned up. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. We're less than four hours away from 8 a.m. being the ending of our challenge, and we don't have half the money we need. But all hope isn't lost. I got a plan gonna turn all our chips i mean all our money into chips and we are finna bet it all at the casino it's the only other way i know we can get the money that we need in that amount of time so what's our foolproof plan and a little bit of time to work with i did one more heist to get us as close to five hundred thousand dollars as possible the futures past museum we licked the meat off that bone that was a horrible metaphor just know we robbed the place. Going home for the last time, I sold all I got from the museum, putting us at $463,336. Yeah, going to the museum was about there a waste of time. But now with all our money gathered, 
a little time to work with, I summon the casino. And yes, the sides of the building are shaded off, but this is the best that nigga could do. I still was more than happy though, making it to the chip machine with time to kill. So I thought. The chip machine didn't allow me to enter all my money with one click or any large amount of money. I had to manually enter $462,000, $1,000 at a time, making us go over our seven day time limit with the challenge technically ending at 8 a.m., meaning we failed. But this ain't stop us from having the parlay of our life. I ain't gonna lie to you now. After a excruciating amount of time, I turned our fortune into chips, making our once $462,000, 46,300 chips, with every 100 chip equaling $1,000. Running to the blackjack table, I went all in. Come on, give me some good cars. Bless me, bless me, bless me. Wigren. Oh my God, they banged me, bro. 14. Oh, no. And this dealer, I didn't, I didn't play this too many times, bro. This dealer is finna freaking beat us with 14. We're gonna have to hit. Usually I wouldn't hit on this, but we're gonna have to hit. Please, God, bless me. Please don't say I bust, please. 18. Oh, we might cooked. We might have cooked with this. Yeah, yeah, we gotta stay on 18. Come on. I ain't gonna lie, my heart was beating here. Cause I knew if we lost in this one round, it would mean everything was for nothing in a sense. But nigga, we don't lose. We just cooked the dealer. Oh, dang, how much money do that put that put us at? So now we're sitting on $926,000. A huge number, but it's not the goal. Try again. Oh my God, bust, bro. 8,500, we just lost, lost a month, I lost, but luckily I only bet it's 75,000. Putting us at 851,000. Let's just go ahead and give it another shot. Dealer won. Oh my goodness. Things looking rough now. I'm not gonna lie. We lost again. This time, 76,000, leaving us with 775,000. But I'm tired of playing. Let's go all in. F it. If we lose, we lose. If we make it, you already know the rest. History. Come on. Come on. Do it. Oh my God. We just blessed up. The only way we lose, bro, if the dealer literally gets, gets 11. Come on, we just blessed up. Let's, oh my goodness. We did it, y'all. Let's go. We are the champions, my friend. And we'll keep on fighting to the end. I'm not getting copyrighted. Sit my black butt back down. We didn't only get a million dollars, but $550,000 on top of it. it we did it. We did it, but we did it. We did it, but we, we accomplished something. Lesson of the day, take risks, stay focused, and punch an old hag in the stomach. If you enjoyed today's video, you can check out some of my other videos on my channel. It's been your boy, Eli Pools. I want you to have a blessed remainder of your day. I'm out. Deuces.